Welcome back. If you never liked to subscribe to our channel before, make sure you do so. That way you can get the latest content as we release it. If you haven't had a chance to see Monday's show, please don't forget. Click on this icon over here and you can actually catch Business Pro Tips on Monday. What we talked about. The two different types of listeners. Well, today in the show I want to talk about how you can be successful when it comes down to you being on YouTube, maybe talking to a client, maybe actually having a Zoom call. How can you be successful? And how can you conquer this little voice inside your head that tells you, you are full of, be back in a moment. Welcome back. Now today on the show, we're going to talk about dealing with that inner voice, that voice inside all of our heads that when we're having a dialogue, not a monologue, but just a dialogue with someone else that causes us to actually kind of doubt what we're saying. We, like, we're proficient in what we're talking about, but we're reading that person's body language. And as we're reading their body language, there's an internal conversation that's happening inside of our mind. So let's jump right into today's conversation. That way we can actually embrace the information together. The inner critic of, you, of yours never goes on vacation. It's their constantly giving opinions on anything and everything you do. That's right. There's an inner critic inside of all of us. And, you know, part of the time we call that our insecurities. Uh, it's, it's where we lack that confidence in a certain area. Well, that inner critic never goes on vacation. You don't even have to ask that inner critic for any information regarding what you do or you don't like. It's going to give you some pain anyway. So since we know that inner critic that's inside of us, each one of us struggles at, at a different point with an inner critic. And that inner critic is going to come at us at a time when we either at our most confidence or we at our lowest. But when it does, we know what steps we can take in order of us to win. That's right, win in anything that we're doing so we can be successful. I, I wrote down three points that we can always look at. Always be thorough, thoroughly prepared. Okay, here's the thing. Even if your inner critic comes out and you're actually at a meeting and you're looking at a person's body language, you can clearly see that they don't understand what you're talking about. There is a difference of understanding. When that happens, a lot of times you will adjust. One of the mistakes I used to make was that I would look at, look around the room and whoever was the weakest person in the room who gave me the most outside observation. Again, outside observation. I'm not omniscient, I'm not omnipotent, so I can't read people's mind. But from the outside observation, what I was doing was I was looking and I noticed that they had their face balled up. They, were, hmm. they was challenging what I was saying. So what would I do? I would over explain. Whenever you do that, you miss the ability to be what? Thorough. I mean, thoroughly for everybody else, but for that person, I'm talking in the area where half the other room already understands this. And after a while, you begin to lose your audience. Number two, put some duct tape over your inner critic. When you do see somebody in the audience or someone that you're sitting in front of or anybody you're talking to, maybe on the street, maybe in the store, maybe on the telephone, and you begin to hear from outside observation, maybe you begin to see from physical outside observation. Remember, people like to tell you all the time, I know what you're thinking. Let me be honest with you. I don't. Unless you tell me, I really don't know. And I'm not going to let your body language, which is the outside, my, outside my outside observation, mislead me. Because sometimes people have a poker face because when you're talking the truth to them, they don't really like it. So they go, hmm. But really what they're doing is fighting a message that's greater than the one that you're giving. And when that happens, don't make that mistake of repeating yourself. Unless they tell you, hey, could you repeat that? What did you mean by that? They have to show that they want the dialogue. Just don't let nobody's outside language Body language do that to you. It's going to be a mistake. And then three, be you, not someone else. You know that old saying, man, I'm going to go on YouTube. Man, I'm going to go to this meeting. I'm going to be just like Tony Robbins. I'm going to motivate people. Don't you dare do that. Don't go motivate anybody. Let me explain a little story to you. It's a true statement, but it's very, very, very heartbreaking. Let me just tell you. Whenever you motivate somebody to do something, that they get excited about. There's always going to be people in the room that's going to see your propensity so that when they see it, it they automatically attach because they, they know from your propensity it, in their minds, they can eat off of you. Oh, this person is capable of letting me eat off of them. They can't eat themselves on your abilities, but they know if they attach themselves to you, they're going to be able to eat. And because when you use empowerment, when you use enthusiasm, or when people say, oh, he knows how to get people excited, the, your propensity to eat, your own abilities is great, but theirs are not. 
So you got to be wary of that. So always be you. Don't go out. I told many people, don't go out and try to motivate people to move beyond their own ability to actually implement what you're saying. Don't do it. Just be you. Don't be a motivator. Learn to be an application specialist, which means I'm talking to you. I'm implementing what I'm talking. And you have a choice to talk with me and do it with me or don't do it at all. But I'm not going to motivate you. Because the fastest way to show that a person is in, has inabilities and lack of skill and experience is to motivate them and then they phew, fall off that cliff. Which means they, they've never got that foundation. They've never learned how to go past the critic in their mind. Part of being, you know the saying, if, when the last time you've been to the gym? Let's think about it. I went last week. Today is Monday. If I don't go today... I got to go past that inner critic. They're like, man, you know, you were sore on Thursday when you was in the gym. You let your wife drag you in there. You was in there with your son. And now you're hurting. You made it through the weekend. You're not hurting as much. Do you really want to go back in there? That's the, I ain't asked the inner critic. There's that inner critic. I have another opinion. I know I got to get in that gym. I know I have to get in there. I know I stated I was going to go and I was going to work out some body parts that haven't been worked out since I was in college. So I decided that decision, that inner Again, that inner critic wants to it. You got to put that depth tape on it. Mm. Once you put that depth tape on it, you got to hit that gym. Being sore is part of it. Can I break through that? That's going to be the key. Can I break through that? There's nothing no one can say to motivate me. Can I beat my own inner feelings first? Then second, can I then set a pattern of courses that I will be consistent despite of that conversation that's happening that nobody can see because they're not omnipresent. It's just that conversation between you, God, and that's it. No one else knows about it until you verbalize it. Because from the outside in, they can only see your actual natural reaction to whatever it is that you're doing. What they can't see is the battle that's happening inside of you. Well, these are the three steps I always wanted to point out again. I'll just repeat. The inner, the inner critic is never going to go again. There's never going to go on vacation. It's Always going to be constantly there giving you opinions when you ain't asked on anything and everything. You ain't asked no questions from your inner critic and yet it's coming. Always be thoroughly, your, and thoroughly prepared. Put some duct tape over the inner critic and be you, not someone else. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Don't forget to make sure you like this video. Even if you don't like it, put the thumbs down. We take all criticism. That's right. We got our own internal, but we also got some external as well. We take it all. Give it all to us. And don't forget to subscribe if you never subscribed before. Next week on Business Pro Tips, I'll be giving you some more information. And then I'm going to hit the street and have conversations with people. I think I'm going to get out there and talk to some of the community, uh, travel a little bit, talk to the other people in different communities, which means I'm not really going flying on planes or anything. I'm just going to go in different parts of the community where I actually, that sees me and we come into contact and get some Business Pro Tips live. I may run into a lot of individuals who are not entrepreneurs. I may run into entrepreneurs. We don't know. But we'll see next week on the show as we talk to different people and you get to actually enjoy it and see how I communicate with them and see if I can overcome my inner critics. Till next week, you guys have a powerful day. And don't forget to check out our show on Friday because we got some things coming up. And that has to do with the slate. Starting a new business can be confusing and not setting yourself up for success is an easy mistake to make. For example, an LLC is simple to set up, but do you know how it affects the taxes you pay? Or what are the pros and cons of registering as a C-Corp? How about this? Does registering a 501c3 mean you can never make money? At CFS Studios, we have the knowledge and experience to guide you. Call us today to schedule a meeting and get your business started on the right path. 402-804-3777, extension 700.